Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the President and the First Lady, my husband Joe and myself, it's a pleasure to welcome you all here today. I want to start by offering my special thanks to our First Lady and our dear, my, and my dear friend, Michelle Obama, for hosting us today and for all she is doing to share this beautiful house with so many Americans. And what an extraordinary group of individuals we have here today. Esteemed women representing all branches and ranks of the United States military, as well as members of the Joint Chiefs, senior enlisted advisors, and others who are working throughout this administration and on the behalf of our country. We're also joined by many wonderful and active spouses who work tirelessly to support our troops and their families. What an honor it is to be with all of you. Michelle and I have been working together over the past year, visiting bases around the country and abroad, meeting with various groups to explore the issues faced by our service members and their families while they're deployed and when they return home. We have both been truly overwhelmed by the courage of our men and women in uniform and inspired by the dignity and the same sense of patriotism that you exhibit every day. Just this past Sunday, I was at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, where I spent time with the Ojala family. Technical Sergeant Thane Ojala will leave in January for her third deployment in Iraq. Her husband is a master sergeant who has already been deployed once, and the Ojalas have three children. Think of the sacrifices that this family is making for our country, yet they do so with pride and without complaint. At Nellis, I also spent time with Mrs. Lori Kresge, a military spouse who is dedicated to the Air Force family and works every day to support our troops, spouses, and their families. These are two women, yet their stories reflect the hundreds of thousands of women who ensure the security of our nation in various roles and ways. I've seen the commitment and passion of women like Patty, Annette, and Sheila, who, like all of you, have dedicated their lives to our troops and their families. As each of you knows, women have, have always played a critical role in supporting our nation's defense and security, and this role will only continue to evolve and grow in the future. We want you to know that my husband and the president and his team recognize the special circumstances that women face in the military. We also want you to know that Michelle and I are working to use our platforms to raise awareness about these issues and to encourage all Americans to join us in supporting our military through acts of service. There is a role for all Americans to play in supporting our soldiers. Just this morning, I was on Capitol Hill for the first ever USO package event, specifically for women serving overseas. I worked with a group of volunteers to assemble over 2,000 care packages, which will be delivered to female troops deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a simple effort but one with our female troops in mind. So today, we say thank you to everyone here, to those who came before you, to those future service members who you are inspiring through your great work. It's now my pleasure to introduce General James Cartwright, the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, an esteemed military leader General Cartwright dedicates a good deal of his time to focusing on the readiness of our troops and their families. And I've also had the pleasure of meeting his dedicated wife, Sandy. We are lucky to have them both here today. Please welcome General James Cartwright.
Thank you, Dr. Biden, for that uh, kind introduction. And to all of the distinguished guests that are here today, and a special thanks to the First Lady uh, for hosting us, particularly uh, in the tradition of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt in this room. Um, quite frankly, uh, you don't normally put Marine fighter pilot with a spot of tea. <laughs> so I, I will do my best here. Um, <laughs> But, but when Eleanor Roosevelt hosted similar events, attitudes were significantly different. In fact, uh, when Marines were first admitting women during World War II, the question of what to call them was brought to the Commandant. The response was easy, Marine. On Saturday, Sandy and I uh, attended a Marine Corps birthday uh, ball at the Naval uh, War College up in Newport, Rhode Island. And as tradition goes, uh, we present a piece of cake to the oldest Marine and the youngest Marine. The honored oldest Marine in attendance was Corporal Janice Calden, who served as a photographer at Camp Lejeune during World War II. She even planned a visit for Roosevelt to the camp. But as the crowd stood and applauded and the MC read her bio, there was one thing that truly struck me. At no time did the MC mention that she was a female only that she was a World War II veteran and a Marine. I think this speaks volumes uh, about how we think about our uniformed women. Not a distinct separate group, but equal contributors to the team. Today's women are key contributors to our military team. Over 200,000 have deployed since 9-11, and over 100 have made the ultimate sacrifice for this nation. Women like Navy Captain Chatfield have led provincial reconstruction teams in Afghanistan. Women like Major General Collins, now Director of Plans and Policy at the United States Strategic Command, have piloted the space shuttle. Women like Major Malakowski have piloted F-16s as part of the Air Force's Thunderbirds. And General Dunwoody has achieved the rank of four-star general. To me, these women represent many of the, of the core and essential values of our military, and they also represent the true treasure of this nation, our youth, and the people who serve. I am privileged uh, to interact with each of you today, the young men and women of our armed services, whether deployed, in garrison, or in recovery at one of our medical facilities. I find each of you committed to service each of you believes this is your nation, and you have learned of sacrifice and commitment early in your lives. You universally believe in service now and into the future, wherever you may land. And you will be our teachers, our first responders, our government officials, and our industry leaders. There is no doubt in my mind about that. You need only know these people, the rest of you in this room, to be proud of each and every one of them. You each have my admiration and my true respect. Thank you so much. And now, I'd like to introduce another woman of high achievement. My friend, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary Napolitano. Thank you. Uh, thank you, General Cartwright, and thank you, Dr. Biden and First Lady uh, Obama, Michelle, for hosting uh, this grand event. Uh, a warm welcome to all our veterans, active duty service women who have joined us from across our nation's military branches today. Uh, I'm excited to be here uh, to honor the enormous contributions that women have made and continue to make to the military. Over the decades, our nation has asked much of you, and you've answered that call with courage and strength over and over again. Regardless of service or rank, all of you have devoted yourselves to a patriotic duty, knowing that the challenges you would face would be just a little harder, a little more complex. I think that perhaps uh, the idea of a military tea doesn't quite capture the grit and determination <laughs> that you bring to your jobs every day. Maybe that depends on what you put in the tea, I don't know. 
As you may know, as you may know, one of the services, the United States Coast Guard, falls into the Department of Homeland Security. At DHS, we are proud of the 42,000 men and women of the Coast Guard who put themselves in harm's way to protect our nation. In fact, women began protecting our coasts as lighthouse keepers more than 150 years ago. Uh, and more recently, the Coast Guard has seen many notable firsts for service women, including the first African-American female commanding officer of a Coast Guard cutter, the first female commanding officer of the Coast Guard Institute, and the first woman promoted to Rear Admiral, the uh, upper half, who went on to become the first female Vice Commandant of the Coast Guard. We're also happy to say that last year's Coast Guard class of enlisted recruits had the highest percentage of service women ever. Admiral Allen and I are intending to keep that trend going in that direction. So. So today we honor and celebrate your achievements. Those of you serving today are a tribute to the sacrifices of the pioneering women in uniform who preceded you. And some of them are here with us today as well. You also serve as an inspiration to those women who will follow in your footsteps and serve in tomorrow's military. So congratulations again. And on behalf of the Department of Homeland Security and the more than 47,000 veterans who work there, I thank you for your service to our nation. And now, I am honored to introduce our host and our nation's fabulous First Lady, Michelle Obama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Isn't this nice? It's just so very nice. Um, let me begin by thanking Secretary Napolitano for that very kind introduction and for her outstanding work in keeping this country safe. She is a true friend uh, and she has been doing an amazing job and we are so uh, proud to have her on our team. I'd also like to thank Dr. Jill Biden, uh, a Blue Star mom, by the way, uh, and a dear friend of mine uh, as well. Uh, she has just been a tireless advocate of, the, the, of highlighting the service of, of the National Guard and reserve members and families. It has just been a thrill for me to be able to work with her on this issue and many others. Um, Jill, thank you for everything you've done. Um, and I also would like to acknowledge Representative Susan Davis, uh, Gwen Moore, as well as Jan Schakowsky, uh, who are here for their terrific work and for joining us today. It's good to see you all. Um, and I also want to recognize General Cartwright, Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, along with the members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who are here uh, and their wonderful wives. And this wasn't in the script, but please stand so that we can uh, recognize and thank all of you. I know you weren't supposed to do this, but you, you can do it. It's my house. <laughs> you know, uh, Jill and I are particularly uh, grateful to the wives of the members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff because they have, from day one, we sat down with them and got advice and guidance on sort of how to develop our initiative, so we're grateful to you. Uh, and I also want to thank the senior enlisted advisors who are here today and their wives, and I'd like to have, ask them to stand as well uh, so we can give them a round of applause. Again, with the, the, the spouses, we met with you uh, shortly thereafter, and we had a terrific conversation 
Uh, the guidance that you have given us has meant a great deal. It's really um, uh, ensured that the efforts that we've undertaken are substantive and, and accurate. So thank you all. Thank you for your support, and thank you for being here today. Um, let me also thank Patty Shinseki uh, for her tremendous efforts on behalf of our nation's military children. Uh, her husband, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, uh, Eric Shinseki, uh, is doing a terrific job, and Patty has become just one of my dearest friends and just always a, a spot of encouragement in a sea of uh, work. Um, <laughs> so where is Patty? Patty, where are you? There you go. Thank you, Patty. And if any of you are still wondering why you're here, <laughs> it's not just tea. You have to thank uh, General Wilma Vaught. General! I had the privilege of meeting this amazing woman at the Women in Military Service Memorial that occurred at Arlington National Cemetery. When was that? That was a while, that was a few months ago. And uh, as you all know, she has just poured her heart and soul into that memorial. Um, uh, you know, just to ensure that America's service women receive the recognition that they've earned. Um, and I, I had a tremendous visit that day. Uh, and one of the things that she said, she turned to me, if you, who was there, you remember, she said, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt did a tea and she said something else and she said, we're coming for tea, right? <laughs> I said, of course, we're gonna have tea. And here we are, so this is why you're here. She... <laughs> It was an excellent idea, excellent idea. Um, but I also want to honor two very special ladies who are here today, um, and I got to meet them as well earlier this year. Uh, Esther Corcoran, uh, who was born in 1905. I hope you don't mind me telling on you. Um, <laughs> there goes Esther. Esther was one of the first women in the Army to achieve the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Pretty amazing. <laughs> and she is join, joining us today with uh, Alice Dixon, who was born in 1907, Alice. served with the famous uh, 68, 68th Central Post Directory Battalion during the Second World War. So let's give them both another <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> These ladies have contributed a great deal to this country, and while their lives may span a century, uh, they're both young at heart. I've talked to them, they're pretty spunky. Uh, <laughs> and we are thrilled to have you both here today, thrilled and honored and, and grateful for your service. Um, and finally, I wanna thank all of you, uh, all the women who have served this nation with courage, determination, and distinction from World War II to today in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, you have served in times of war and in times of peace, uh, an all-volunteer force right from the beginning, part of a proud tradition that stretches back more than two centuries, uh, long before women had the right to vote, long before we even had the right to vote or own property, uh, before America even existed, uh, women were serving this country, facing danger, risking their lives, even dressing up, dressing up like men uh, so they'd be allowed to serve. Uh, and it's never been an easy path. I can only imagine how challenging it has been and continues to be. 
I know that some of you have, have faced skepticism and ridicule. Uh, some of you had to contend not just with the challenge of doing your jobs, but with others' perceptions that you weren't up to, uh, up to the job simply because of your gender. Uh, as Air Force veteran uh, Dr. Donald Lorraine put it, this is a quote, to be a success, a woman had to be confident, self-assured, persistent, and have a great sense of humor. At times, you had to employ a certain desperate deviousness to get the job done. <laughs> so maybe you had to work a little harder and a little smarter. You may have felt a little lonely at times. At times, you may have even gotten downright discouraged. Um, but you stuck it out, each and every one of you. Uh, you found colleagues who supported you uh, of all genders and all races and all backgrounds. You found superiors who pushed you and encouraged you. And then you rose to the challenge. Uh, you rose and you found opportunities to advance and to build exciting, amazing careers. And along the way, you all broke one brass ceiling after another. Uh, in this room alone, we have the first female four-star general. We have the first woman in the Navy to be promoted to Master Chief, the first woman in the Army Reserve to be promoted to the general officer rank. We have the first woman in the Army to receive the expert field medical badge. We have the first African-American woman to serve as chief nurse at Walter Reed Hospital, and so many more firsts and onlys. And that's the result of your hard work and your courage and your persistence. Uh, but we know these achievements aren't yours alone. That's something that Jill and I have talked about, we've learned more about over the course of this year, because we know that service doesn't just end with the person wearing the uniform. You all know that. We know that our servicemen and women's sacrifices are their family's sacrifices as well. And many of you have spouses, partners, children, parents who stood by you and encouraged you and prayed for you every step of the way. And this day is their day too, as far as we're concerned. Uh, so let's take a moment to recognize uh, those members uh, of our families uh, who've supported you and your service as well. But I hope, yes. Yeah. But I hope you all know that your service, that your legacy is more than just your own service. I hope that you know that your legacy will be measured in the service of every woman who follows in the trails that you've blazed, every woman who benefits from your daring and determination. Uh, it will be measured in the inspiration that you provide to our daughters and our granddaughters and to our sons and our grandsons as well. Because of you, when young women wonder how high they can rise in our military, they can look at General Ann Dunwoody and her four, uh, four hard-earned stars. They can see that, it's real. Uh, when they ask what kind of jobs they can do, they can look to women like all of you who've played just about every kind of role imaginable. And when they ask whether they can cut it, whether they have what it takes to succeed, all they have to do is to look at your lives, to look into your eyes, uh, and to look at the careers that you've developed that inspire us all. They can look to the example of Coast Guard Commander Dorothy Stratton, who led the SPARS during World War II. And she stated, we wanted to serve our country in its time of need. Uh, she said, I'm proud to sponsor a new, co oh, she didn't say this, but I am proud to sponsor a new Coast Guard cutter bearing her name to ensure that her service will be remembered for generations. They can look to Jennifer Greaves, who made history by becoming the first woman Marine One aircraft commander and by commanding the first ever flight with an all-female crew, I remember this, proudly carrying my husband from the White House to Andrews Air Force Base uh, back in July. That was a wonderful day. Um, they can look to Tammy Duckworth,
who flew combat missions in Iraq and lost both her legs when her helicopter was hit by a grenade. She went on to become a fearless advocate for veterans and wounded warriors and now serves as Assistant Secretary of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs at the Veterans Affairs Department. Thank you, Tammy. And they can look to the example of women like Amy Kruger, who lost her life in the unthinkable violence at Fort Hood two weeks ago. Amy had enlisted in the Army after the September 11th attacks. And when her mother told her that she couldn't take on Osama bin Laden all by herself, Amy replied simply, watch me. She said, watch me. And I think that more than anything, that phrase, watch me, sums up the spirit of our women in uniform throughout our history. When others doubted you or dismissed you or questioned whether you could endure the training or complete the mission, that was your response. Watch me, right? Watch me succeed. Watch me risk everything I have for the country I love. Watch me do my part to protect this nation and protect this union. Watch me. So we thank you for your courage and your service. We're honored to have you in our presence. We're thrilled, General, that you came up with this brilliant idea. <laughs> and we hope that you don't spike the tea until after we leave. <laughs> but we are thrilled to have you here. Welcome to the White House, and thank you so much for your service. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>